when we're calling plays, this is what I love about the wing tee. It, it's all in a, in a series. And so you don't have to be the smartest guy. You don't have to know everything is. A lot of times I'll, I'll go to clinics or I'll talk to other coaches and, and, and they're talking so much over my head in, in, in ways they're, they're so smart and, and they're understanding things, but you don't have to understand everything. You don't have to know everything there is to know to be able to call plays and to be successful in the wing tee. But you have to run things in a series. When, when I first started, Coach Gerald's uh, – the, the guy I learned under at Dexter, he, he would call me in, we would sit down, and, and we would watch film together and go back over it. And I was like, Coach, has a terrible call. When I, you know, when the play didn't work, he said, well, if you'll look at it and, and you'll look at how you ran this and, and the way the guys are blocking – and, and if you if you look at the next play, why did this play not work? What play in the series do we have that if they stop the buck, then what should you be running, depending on what the defense end does, depending on what the linebackers are doing, depending on how they're playing, how the front's reading. So if you'll run things in a series, then it allows you to call plays based off what happened on that play and what is next in the series to be able to make it go. Coaches in the box have a very important job. Coaches on the field have a very important job. They have, they have specific things to look for. Each coach has an assignment. And, and the guy I talked to in the box, he's, he's looking at the, at the overall things. That's something we'll talk about later in, in the passing game is what he's looking for. I also have a, a coach on the sideline. What is the strong side defensive end doing? What are the linebackers doing? What is the front doing? And, one thing that's really helped us a lot is, is the huddle sideline where we can go back and look and, and watch the plays and, and see it from the end zone view and see how the linemen are playing, seeing what the linebackers are reading, and, and it really helps us in case somebody misses what they're supposed to be looking for. The, the biggest thing is to take what the defense gives you. You know, you, you might come into a game going, I'm going to run the buck and I'm going to run the, the boot uh, and, and you get out there, and their whole game plan is they're going to have three guys outside of your tight end and wing make it where it's really hard to run the buck. Or, or you know, they're blitzing as soon as you look like you're running a boot and, and cause so much chaos in the backfield. And so you got to go, all right, when they're stopping the wing tee or trying to stop the wing tee, they're trying to take something away. And by doing that, they're, they're making something else easier to run. So – it's okay to say I only run one or two bucks or two or three trips, whatever it might be. They're they're giving us they're giving us the belly or they're giving us the power, and, and we're going to run that and, until they adjust. A lot of people want to start adding things to the wing tee. Like when you start running plays, if something's not successful, you start out your season, you start out and and you and you had a bad game, you get off to a bad start, and, and you think we need to add more stuff. We're, we're not doing enough stuff. And we need to add more stuff in it. And it's really just the opposite. You, you need to take away some things and you need to get great at running your base plays. You, you need to run so many traps, so many bucks, so many bellies that, that you run it over and over and over until you get to where you can't run it wrong. And whatever defense they put up there, your guys have seen it enough and they know how to block it. And, and so many times we go back and look and go, why did this play not work? What happened? Well, we didn't block it right. We didn't get our head in the right spot. We didn't take the right angle. It's not that we need more plays. It's the plays we're doing, we're not running them right, and we're not doing right. So get real good at the base plays before you start adding plays. And don't let somebody come and go, we don't have enough plays. In uh, I think it was in 2003 or four. We, we set out and we said, we're going to run. 10 plays and, and we're going to run them right before we add anything. And we got all the way to, to week nine or 10. We had a lot of talent. We, we were really uh, good up front, had some good backs, but we ran those plays and we've gotten different formations and we ran them real well before we started adding anything. So I, th I think that's really important. play 
uh, people for the first time, you hadn't really seen them go against the wing tee, you never know what, what you're going to see. They, they might all week be playing uh, some kind of split defense or what we call a four-man front, two linebackers, two outside linebackers. And, and then you get into the game and they're a total different defense. And so you have to practice your guys being ready for whatever they might put up there. And so you got rules. And if you'll follow your rules and, and work on it and practice, then whatever they put up there, your guys will be ready for. And it's a lot harder for the offensive line. It, it's easy for the backs, but the offensive line have to be able to block, um, you know, a nose and, and then a, a double eagle and, and all the different looks that the, they see and blitzing linebackers. And so we spend a lot more time with our linemen going over all the different looks and things they have to do. And they have to be really prepared for, for anything defensively. The other thing is you, you got to be uh, able to keep the defense off balance. So if you come out here and go, well, on first down, we're going to run. We're going to run again on second down, if it's third and long, now we're going to pass the ball. Well, you're really making it hard on yourself. And so you, the wing T, I, I believe, is a, is a big play, high scoring offense. We've been able to um, do all this scoring and do things and, and score big points and, and make big plays. But it, one of the things that, that we do is we, we pass on rundowns. And so when we're really looking to throw the ball, it, it might be uh, first and 10, second and three. You know, what are, when they're really thinking we're going to run, that's when we're going to try to throw it. And then we like to run it when they think we're going to throw it. So it's just kind of the opposite of what you think about a lot of times. If you'll track your own tendencies of when I'm in this set, we're on this hash and this down, this we're, we're running buck and we're running trap. Then if you'll keep up with that, you got to think when I'm when I'm going into a game, the, the team I'm going against, they got all my tendencies. They, they got it. everything. You got to think of, of them as being one step ahead of, of everything. So anything you can think of, you got to figure that the defense has already got you tracked, got you thought about, and, and so. You got to know what your tendencies are, and you got to be able to, when it comes really important times, to, to be able to break your tendencies and to be able to go against it and and, and knowing what they are and, and being able to set it up. A lot of times we'll go into a game and go, I know every time we're first and ten in this uh, left formation on this hash, we're going to run this play. So we'll we'll go in and purposely break some tendencies, or maybe purposely continue with the same tendencies setting up for a later date when we want to do break it. Um, if you'll just run the same plays using different sets and using motions and using some shifts and things, you really don't have to do that much. You, you can continue to get good at, at the buck and the trap and the belly and the boots, but mixing up your, your sets and your formations and, and, and all the different motions and things you can work in makes it very difficult on the defense. Coaches, I really hope you got some great information from that YouTube video. Again, hit the subscribe and like button down below. It gives us valuable data. And you also get notified when I upload new content to this channel. Thanks for watching, coaches.